We had some pretty big tier changes for this month in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Rain has fallen off and Pelipper has fallen down to the UU tier. The drop off of Rain caused Barrascuta to fall all the way down from OU to RU, but I'm sure it'll quickly rise up to UU now with Pelipper in the tier. One of the fastest mons in OU in Iron Boulder has now fallen down to the UU tier. Jirachi currently finds itself in one of the lowest tiers it's ever been, RU. And the Sheer Force Dragon Dance Sweeper for Ralligator has fallen all the way down to the NU tier. But probably some of the craziest drops are the NU to PU drops, with both Heracross and Staraptor falling down to the PU tier, along with the pseudo-legendary Gudra, as well as another dragon in Kingdra. These tier changes are absolutely insane, so let's talk about them. Some wild tier changes, let's get right into it. If you do enjoy this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I'm on my way to half a million subs. But the first is that the King Landorus is back in top 10, number four in usage. What is causing Landorus? to rise up. Well, people are using that Taunt Earth Power U-Turn set with either Grass Knot or Stealth Rock. It is a check to Raging Bolt. It's a check to Zamazenta, the Iron Defense Body Press. It is uh, check to Great Tusk as well. That's not running Ice Spinner. It also eats Ice Spinner, lets it weaken for the entire team. So it took a little while, but Landers is definitely back. It's not number one and it probably won't be number one because the three ahead of them are way too good. But Landorus is basically back. Some other things, we see Volcarona in top 10 next to uh, to Raging Bolt, but I think the big one in terms of the mons that have risen is that Garganical has risen back. Garganachi has risen back to the OU tier. And what set is it using? The exact same set it was using before. I just think it took a little while for people to kind of like, oh wait, this mon is once again very good. You see like a pickup of it in Smogon Premier League, the tournament, and then it just ends up doing the Salt Cure Protect stuff all over again. It's really difficult to deal with. It's just a, it's just a great mon. I know some people are also using Curse as well. I saw a couple suits with that and the Iron Defense sets. Uh, the Covert Cloak error of like, era, excuse me, not error, era of like Golden Go and things like that, kind of gone at this point too. Maybe it may come back but Garg has found itself back in the OU tier. I'll try my best to have timestamps down below as well. I'll look at the usage stats in a second. Uh, the three raises to OU from UU are Deoxys Speed, as well as Iron Moth and Rabombi. So again, we're kind of seeing an uptake in uh, webs on the ladder. I put uh, Deoxys there, but let's talk about Rabombi for a second. So. I think a lot of this is the fact that there is that French ladder tour going on. Shout out to uh, Roy and everyone else. And a lot of them are spamming Sticky Web. Sticky Web is kind of making a comeback on the ladder. And I know they're all making alts. It's kind of like OLT, but for the French community, if I'm not mistaken. So they are, and if I am mistaken, obviously correct me down below. Uh, no problem. But the they're using webs again and again which is fine. Webs has always been good. Webs plus Golden Ghost, so they can't defog or wrap spin. It's always been good. Attack Booster Tusk is being seen more and more on those. You see some Gouging Fire. Obviously, you see your Zamazenta Ivy Cudgel, uh, Ogre Pond on them as well. Deoxys is really interesting, right? Because this Pokemon, if you actually look at the UU tier, Deoxys was number five in usage. Same thing with Iron Moth at number six in usage, and we'll get into that in a second. Now, if you ask some of the latter players, uh, Deoxys was pretty tame in the UU tier. It was not overall broken, it just was solid. It wasn't broken. I think a lot of this had to do with the fact that Mana Buzz and Scizor were in the uh, tier just straight up checking it. Zapdos just roost off all the damage, even on like Psy Spam, even Extra being there, bulky enough does not die to sewer power. So it was pretty tame, uh, but it was obviously on 20% of teams. And I know in tournaments, people are like 50-50 in terms of whether it was good or not. But this Pokemon itself is was number five. It's gone. Something faster than Latio. So Latio's being more oppressive now, especially a Garchomp being gone now too. So it's interesting. Latios is already on 23% of teams. It's already good as hell in the UU tier. It's like black and white Latios down there. That Mon is just so good, except there's no pursuit to trap it whenever it hits Draco on Tyranitar and the switch in. So that Mon being gone is absolutely crazy. The Iron Moth Rise, I every OU video I've done Iron Moth, and I mean, you can attest to this if you watched any of them, but this Pokemon is so freaking good. It's so good in the OU tier. It is so good. I knew it was about time that it was gonna rise. It was also so real. It was really, really, really good in UU as well, especially with the rise of Garg, right? Because Garg always had to protect, plus the uh, Salt Cure, plus the Terra to kind of get out of those situations. Uh, my favorite set in the UU tier and even the OU tier, honestly, 
is uh, Terra Ground, sub Terra Ground for Heatran when Heatran starts to pick up in popularity. It's number 35 currently in OU, so maybe that's not like necessary, but this is a huge mon for you, you right? Iron, can I just tell you, like Iron Moth, while it always lost speed ties to Ogre Pond Rock, if you play Yu Yu, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's never won a speed tie versus Latios. I'm talking about when the booster energy is gone or their scarf. It is so crazy. It's bulky enough to take on Scizor as long as Zapdos doesn't discharge it. Plus, this is why I love Terra Ground as well, because not only does it allow you to bop Skeletor for a 2 KO, but it allows you to be immune to that discharge from Zapdos, which will otherwise take you down. You simply need one Fiery Dance boost. I know that's super rare. Crazy, by the way, that we have Torch Song now when, when a guy like me used Fiery Dance growing up and it's just, I never got the boost when you needed it. It felt like it should have though. But yeah, huge, huge change uh, for, for Yu Yu that both those mons are gone. Rabambi, all right, like Webs was good, but it wasn't like broken back there, especially with like Drill being number two best spinner. But yeah, Iron Moth being gone is insane. Um, I don't know if that's, I mean, that they were powerful for the tier. I actually, I actually thought this mon would be banned eventually too, uh, looking at it. But the rest of stuff, we have Armor Rouge and Necrozma going up to the RU tier. Wow, I wonder what's being used in the RU tier that allows Armor Rouge and Necrozma, two psychic types, to thrive down here. Huh, is it the exact same thing that people use in every single tier? Now, Necrozma is just really good, and I'm, um, Armor Rouge is great as well. Uh, the Iron Defense sets are disruptive. You can for sure use some sort of Ndidi. Now Ndidi is Yuyu, but not in uh, Ndidi female. So you can definitely use Psy Spam in that tier. Necrozma fits so well with that. Uh, and Armor is just really, really good at checking um, just a lot of the bulkier mons. It also has a good speed tier. It's just above Pokemon like Breloom. And it checks like Chestnut and stuff like that. Conkeldur and Aterra away from checking Kron. It's also one of the special attackers that just blast through cycles are. So definitely a, a solid mon over there. And the Cosma can just get rid of things with its um, Meteor Beam set. One of my favorite sets, honestly, just lets you destroy things like Thundee and Volcanion and stuff right there. So strong. It they were banned from NU, so it didn't really affect any tier. However, the Chansey plus Overquill definitely affects the UU tier. Um, Overquill is, or the, uh, the NU tier, Overquill was exceptional in NU, it was my favorite. It was not in top 10, right? It's not in top 10 of usage uh, when it comes to this tier, uh, but still was amazing on balance. SD was also really good as well. It's Overquill going crazy. SD was also really good as well, but it's just, when you have Politoed in the RU tier and drizzles around, first off, this mon's good there. Secondly, the fact that it checks the psychic types that are running around in that tier for sure. So Overquill, big loss for, for NU, and Chansey is obviously Chansey, right? So those Avalug Chansey stalls are on the uh, the decline now. I actually like that Thwacky went to PU, and we're gonna be talking about the PU tier because that's the, I mean, look to the right, right? Look directly to the right of PU uh, from, from Thwacky there. PU has some insane changes, and Thwacky is actually gonna be so incredibly good for them. So we'll get into that in a second, but before we do, I just want to say, if you didn't know, I do currently have my Draco Ice Shaker available. Now, this is uh, stainless steel, holds up to 26 ounces. It also comes in a bundle if you want to pick it up uh, with my Meteor Burst, which is hydration, by the way, zero caffeine, it's hydration. Um, if you get anything caffeinated, though, 18 plus. And then it comes with an exclusive Pokeam card. I wish I had the more pictures here to show you, but this is the second um, out of five, hopefully this year, exclusive Pokeam cards that are only going to be happening with these bundles. So if you want to pick it up, feel free to use code AIM20. I'm doing a subathon currently. If you missed last night, y'all are missing out, all right? Because some of the stuff, we did a uh, scribble with me, Key, Edgar, and then we also had Pedro, who's the guy editing my intros, my boy, uh, as well as Mace, who I'm on the CMP podcast with. And I, I just need to show you something. So for those that don't know, scribble is a game where you basically have to draw and people have to guess. This was Envy's Arcanine. This was Envy's Arcanine, yep. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, so you're missing out if you don't come through. And also, thank you so much for all the love and support on day one of the subathon. Again, I'm still making content every single day, but if you want to come and watch me stream, say hi. Appreciate it. Every member adds one minute to the timer as well. But yeah, if you want to pick this up, use code AIM20. It also works site-wise, and it will be you. It'll be working up until the subathon ends. We have two huge drops from OU to UU. The first one is Iron Boulder. This one was bound to happen. Uh, it's the fastest non-scarf Pokemon in the tier, right? Besides like uh, Dragapult and yeah, that's basically it. 
like Iron Bolt, or I guess the Dark Ride as well. With Booster Energy, it's basically the fastest Pokemon without a Scarf because it's able to switch up moves, right? So Iron Boulder, in my opinion, the best set was the Sub Swords Dance Terra Fly. Uh, that way you can set up on Gliscor and Great Tusk as long as they are weakened and don't have Ice Spinner, which they all do. Uh, it's That's kind of like the big thing about it, right? It's, it's natural typing isn't that great. While it can set up on Pokemon like Iron Valiant that are special because of its good special defense, it just really wasn't too strong and, and it, it had trouble breaking Landorus. If, if it uh, subs on Landorus, then it can go for U-turn from there. Uh, and it's just, while ground plus fighting is really good, uh, if it was using Swords Dance 3 attacks, it had to run like Zen Headbutt for Great Tusk or Psycho Car or anything like that. If it wasn't running either of those, it couldn't deal with Tusk or Val. You need them severely weakened. Like the opportunity cost is small. This was a Mon that, in my opinion, needs Terra to be good. And when you have King Gambit, Tusk, like so many good Terra Mons, Volk in the tier, Val, even Moon, like, even like Gouging Fire and Zamazenta, there's just so much competition. So this Mon falls down to the UU tier. Good. I think it's going to be a blessing for UU because Latios. Yeah, one of my favorite mons, Zapdos, I love you too. Mandibuzz, look at all these mons right here, and look at my friend Iron Boulder. It might actually be too much for the tier. Because Ogre Pond, uh, Heart, not Hearthstone, Cornerstone, is really good, right? That mon is really, it's actually probably like number 11 or 12 in usage, something like that, or top 15, uh, for sure. Uh, and it's really good because of its ability to overwhelm Mandibuzz, doesn't care about like Ozzy and stuff like that. Speed tie at least with Latios, and win every single speed tie, and also knock out Zapdos, right? And Iron Moth too. So it's very good in that regard. And this is another offensive rock that is faster, that doesn't have to worry about speed ties, that has the natural psychic typing to take on Latios, has a Spadef to live a Draco as well, and can Terra out of like bullet punch range and things like that too. Maybe we'll see some Terra fly again. Uh, maybe we'll see some Terra fire to resist Scizor. Terra Steel to take Dracos from Latios and set up. Boost Energy is going to be really good. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some tearing action on that in the future. Don't know when, though. We do see the drop of Pelipper from OU. I guess the uh, the fact that our Chalodon isn't there holding Rain together and making it arguably a matchup fish uh, is just too much for the tier. Now, funnily enough, we saw Barrasquita move from OE to Ari. The reason it had such a huge drop is because when a Pokemon raises from a tier, so it actually rose up from RU directly to Bear, uh, to OU because of the Archild on Rain meta, um, it goes right back to the tier it is, so it doesn't drop down to UU. So it actually goes down to RU, uh, which has like Politoed and Overquill, but I'm sure it'll shoot right back up to the UU tier where you have Tornado Therian and, um, and uh, what's it called? You have Tornado Therian, you have obviously now like Boulder, uh, and you can still use Greninja and stuff like that. So there's a ton of good Mons, and I'm sure it's and even Zapdos like on Rain. You can basically make your standard Rain or your standard Black and White Rain at a point almost. Uh, not really, but you know more close to the six or seven gen, uh, seven gen probably. But yep, you get your Rain right there. It's gonna be really good. Rain's gonna be strong in this tier. Uh, Garg is gone, so you can't Terra Water flip the matchup. Yeah, Garg was one of the good Rain answers. Um, so yeah, Rain's gonna be strong. Rain is going to be very strong. Our child on being gone kind of loses everything from there. Jirachi, it's wild, man. Jirachi falling down to the RU tier. And I'm not 100% sure on... I mean, I guess I could say why I think it fell down. It doesn't deal with any of the Pokemon in top 10. I'm sorry, it doesn't. It just... Every mod in top 10 just smashes it. Shoo. It doesn't take on Latios' hits like it used to. If it was running like Wish Protect or anything like that, you would get overwhelmed by Garchomp. Drills in the tier two. There's just some good steel types. Look at these great steel types. And now technically Jirachi's always ran up with extra drill and scissor, right? But I just don't think it was good enough, especially with Iron Moth in the tier. It couldn't. It, it kind of just got overwhelmed. Um, whenever I fought it, I wasn't terrified of it. I don't know. Iron Head flinches. They don't be flinching like before. Um, I don't want people to think Covert Cloak stopped anything because I don't think it stopped anything at all. Uh, when it comes to this Pokemon. However, when it comes to the RU tier, it's sad. it's really sad to see this uh, this beast down here. And I'm not even sure how amazing it'll be. Now, there's a plethora of fighting types down here. And I guess Combine Super Rachi could be cool. You can even use some sort of stall thing with Jirachi a pout on Moltres um, and try using Jirachi to check like Nick Rosma and stuff like that. But it's not going to work out, eh, right? When Electric types can't be paralyzed and Thunderous is one of your best mods. Like, let's look at the top 10 in usage on this tier, right? You got you got Thunderous and Polion, which and, and Polion and Reverend, right? And, and Kobalion. Those are your support steals. Kobalion can set up, but also Volt Switch, Iron Defense, uh, things like that. 
Very room sets up T spike and can sweep. Support wise though, it's really, really good. It's a good, it's a fantastic baby Q check. Uh, and then you have like Thunderous Theory and Empoleon up there, Moltres. Uh, maybe like some sort of Combine Super Rachi, the, the, the DPP set, the Generation 4 set, where you use like Grass Knot to deal with Hippo and stuff like that. But even then, Hippos can run Spadef in this tier because of Thunderous. So it's tough. And Terra. Maybe we'll see something new. I, I challenge you to make a Jirachi team that you feel is broken in the tier. I am kind of, it's kind of hard for me to see it right now, but something that's broken though. Something that looks broken. Now, you know, Z with Zerud being in the tier and uh, Terra, and Hippo's Terra watering if they really want to, or Terra grassing, um, or Fairy just to eat this Mon. Gator has fallen. It's kind of crazy to see Sheer Force for Alligator though in NU. I will say that I, I hope that Rabia has time to record with me or that I'm able to record with this before it potentially gets banned from this tier. I am so excited about Gator. I think Dragon Dance Gator is gonna be nice. Like you can do some Dragon Dance spam with Gator plus Flygon plus like Iron Thorns if you really, really want to. Um, it's just gonna be such a nice wall breaker setup mod. I think specifically more of a wall breaker because we do have physical um, water types in this tier. But Cloyster is more of an ice type than a water type, I would argue. And, you know, Pert is more support. Tentacruel is more support, even though Tentacruel flips turns as well, things like that. Vaporeon isn't even physical type of thing. So, and Quagsire is more support as well. So I'm actually really excited because those, those sheer force, like I feel like this Mon is gonna be the type of Mon that if you're fighting balance, you just come in and attack. That's all you do, right? You come in, you do some damage, you attack, you get a ton of damage off, and and yeah, obviously your standard Swords Dance and, and Dragon Dance sets look good, but I feel like that's the big thing. I think you can also get away with like an agility set. You do have Basque Legion though, excuse me. That's the number one physical water here with like Scarf and stuff with Flip Turn, which Gator actually learns now too, which is pretty cool. Nice little Flip Turn. Obviously, not Sheer Force Boost. If it was Sheer Force Boost, imagine not being able to switch out, but having a, why would you even use this? <laughs> like, like, why would you want this, this move? It's 90 base power. I got liquidation right there, all right? And it gets stronger. I, I don't know. Pretty cool. Um, Ice Punch, obviously, to deal with Brew Bonnet and stuff like that. It's bulky-ish enough. Yeah, 100 is great. 100 is actually great. So, eat a hit from Flygon and stuff like that. Good speed tier. Good-ish speed tier, right? Being slower than Chandelure is kind of, uh, especially in this tier. Chandelure is so freaking good. But... Swords Dance Aqua Jet sets come to mind and they actually look really, really strong. Uh, I feel like Lycanroc trying to revenge kill you with CC and things like that. So we'll see. We'll see how it ends up doing. I, I, I think it'll be super strong and I'm actually very excited to record this mod very, very soon. Uh, there is another mod I'll be using first though. So this is where it all gets interesting. So there's an insane amount of PU drops, right? And I'm going to do this in a way that I think, that, or I'm going to do this in the way that I want to do it. I played a lot of PU last night on stream. I built three teams with Key and Edgar, because I don't know if y'all know Key, but he really gets into Mons whenever there's a crazy tier change. Like, yo, what the hell is this? So we played, we built around Star Raptor. The fact that Star Raptor is PU is insane, right? From going from perpetually UUBL to one of the lowest tiers is wild to me. Now, again, there's so many Pokemon, this is just gonna end up happening every single generation. I'm sure next generation, we'll, we'll see Deoxys in RU or whatever like that, kind of like on those PO days back in the day. But I wanna talk about the Mons that kind of like stand out to me from the NU to PU because it's basically NU as well. So Star Raptor, obviously Choice Man, Choice Scarf. I played a lot of this. This Mon is obviously phenomenal. It's a nuke. I don't know if it'll last in the PU tier, I'll be real. One of the best answers is obviously on the board right there. It's actually Eviolite <laughs> Duraludon. Uh, one of the answers I was using for it was actually uh, Fizz Def Alolan Golem. Shout out to Key who gave us that suggestion with Stealth Rock on our offense. We were literally using it on offense and it was putting in work as uh, a Stealth Rocker and just a Volt Switcher for us. Everybody and their mom is using Gligar. That Mon is just everywhere in the tier, which makes sense because Electrotypes are really good. I'm just like, let's look at the old PU tier and compare it to what we have right now. So PU, <laughs> PU has Scyther, which is a good Enumon, right, at a point. Hariyama, another good Enumon in the point. Santa Conda Palace, and good Enumon. Jolteon, Snorlax, like, most of these are pretty tame, except for Decidueye, which was never that great in the Enu tier. And I also think that it's gonna be something that kinda changes as well. I mean, in this case, Decidueye is a switch into Santa Conda and Palace, and that's what it's checking and Jolteon with that don't tear ice. That's what it's checking on this list. That's why it's there. But when it comes to Star Raptor, like none of those stand to Star Raptor. Even like Terra Steel, Hariyama is still taking like half 
from Reckless Brave Bird. So I don't know if Raptor is going to stay in this tier. It's kind of wild, right? It's also wild because like NU is not even that, NU wasn't even that good for Raptor, right? Um, Lycanroc just being number one in Revenge killing it. And then you have the uh, Iron Thorn setting up just the offenses. I mean, the fact that Lycanroc lasted the bands is just really wild. I just think that mod's too much for the tier, personally. But yeah, ladder will be ladder. Uh, and, you know, people don't want to ban it. People don't want to ban it. Is what it is. Uh, though this was a tier leader suggestion. But Raptor is the big one that stands out to me. I don't think that mod is going to last in the PU tier. Other interesting mods that I think super stand out. I'm going to talk about uh, this group of Pokemon real quick. So we got Hitmonlee, right? So we got Hitmonlee. Uh, which I think is going to be incredible with Grassy Terrain. This mod in particular is going to be incredible with Grassy Terrain, which you just got from Thwacky right next to it, right? Thwacky moving up to PU is nice. I mean, you could always use Thwacky, but that's great. Um, the hair, the fighters in general, though, are wild. So Heracross, what the hell? PU, Guts Heracross, another mod that just like straight up disrupts. This mod is also the reason why Gligar is being used as much as possible. It's also Gligar is just such a great ground type, but yeah, Gligar being there as much as possible is one of the checks. It's it's, it's check at best. It's not too KO'd by Facade, um, but Flame Orb Facade, but you still have to worry about it. If it tears, you just set up on it anyway and you're off the Flame Orb. So what's Gligar gonna do? Earthquake for like 20 something percent? It's not gonna do much, but it's there. Set up a Stealth Rock, Taunt, U-Turn, all that stuff. Um, another grounder that I've seen everywhere while playing is Gastron and it honestly makes sense. Gastron makes probably the most sense. Like, look what fell down. Rotom Heat fell down. You have uh, Kingdra is the big one, which we'll get into in a second, but Kingdra, Rotom Heat, uh, and just Inteleon. So Gastron, you're, you're all around. Just sponge your check to these threats that can stop them from actually putting in uh, a ton of work. So I'm just, I don't, I, uh, I think this is a great mod, especially because of the fact that one of the, the sleepers in this tier, in my opinion, well, current, it, it's like, it was like day one and I was playing, right? So it's really hard to say sleeper, but Galarian Slubro is incredible, right? Now, Quick Claw is banned. So the combination of Quick Claw plus Quick Draw is banned. Quick Claw in general is banned in NU, so it's not viable or it's not being able to use in the PU tier. Uh, however, that doesn't matter because Quick Draw is still 30%. Um, this mon, I was using, the only coverage I was using was Sludge Wave and Surf with Terra Water, uh, with Trick Room, Nasty Plot, with Quick Draw, because, you know, uh, outside of Trick Room, I have a 30% chance to move first, too. Um, insane Mon, absolutely insane Mon. Uh, once Gastro was gone, nothing in the tier was really taking it on. Uh, I was even 1v1ing like a Terra Steel Aromatisse that was calm minding. It was crazy to think about. Uh, but really, really strong Mon in the tier. I'm excited to see how it evolves around this. Uh, some of the harder hitters you have here are like I said, Kingdra is there. You have Kingdra plus Dreadnought, so you can definitely see some manual rain uh, going on in the PU tier. That's definitely something I could see happening. Uh, just PU just changes up so much. We're like bronze on to set up the rain and, and go from there. PU is more like, and then obviously other rain abusers besides Dreadnought would be Kilowattro, right? So Kilowattro uh, would be another one that just kind of overwhelms. So it's, it's less about like why these mons fell down or, or, or fall down. There's just the usage stats are just, it doesn't work for when we have 10 billion Pokemon. It's not going to work like that anymore. And we're going to continuously see these drastic changes generation after generation. Hopefully I'm still around recording during all that, you know, I uh, would love to. But in terms of the strong fairies in the tier, Screamtail falling down as well. Now, I didn't see a lot of Screamtail besides the Rock Stealth Rock. That's a beautiful Screamtail, by the way. I have a list of all the, the credits. Yo, that's so sick of all the credit stuff that Pedro gave me that we're putting down below as well for this. This is the older version of everything that we're doing. There's an updated model that I haven't used uh, yet, but um, I was thinking like Raptor plus like, or like just Screamtail, if it's not running the Stealth Rock, you can definitely run get away with some balance down here, especially after a few bands. Uh, I think that if Raptor goes as well, balance gets even better. Uh, but Raptor's just type of mon that just, you know, attacks and dies while it attacks. So uh, Belly Bolt and Colossal are pretty solid switch-ins, Alone Golem, like I said, even like Duraludon. Uh, one of my favorite things down here has to be Arcanine. Everybody is running offense, and even if they're not, it doesn't matter. Arcanine, like the set we had the most success with last night was Choice Man Extreme Speed Terra Normal. It was just picking off Pokemon. Jolteon falling over. 
hair cross falling over, hit monthly type of thing. Kingdra at like 70% was dying. Raptor after Stealth Rock was dying. It was just so good at picking up. And when you have a new metagame, right? Everybody's, I mean, you, the, there are people that will put around the bulkiest Pokemon and try and ladder with that. Sure, that's fun. If you have fun with that, go ahead and do that. But others, guys like me, I like throwing some of the most offensive bonds and see what we can do from there. And this Arcanine was just putting in some work. Like we made a joke team and this Pokemon was putting in work. We made a serious team and we made a joke team. And then we made a Trick Room in the middle team. Speaking of Trick Room, I think it's actually really strong. Um, Carbink felt really good. It was another one of the Staraptor answers that can do something. On offense, we were using Minior. Minior felt very, very strong uh, using it as well. Him on top felt like whatever especially versus lead frost last offense don't think it was that great into it uh so uh, and you know frost is like my go-to mon if that if that mon's allowed in the tier and it's a new tier frost is definitely my go-to mon look at it so this mon on offense looks good uh so titan was very interesting so it's a titan's very interesting because in this tier you have alolan vulpix so that's uh, something that people were using. So the Titan falling down means that Alolan Vulpix is actually, I don't want to say viable, but it has a potential place to use this with Belly Drum. You know, uh, now again, Light Clay is also banned. So you can't really do, you can do Aurora Veil, but you're not gonna have maximum turns, but you can do Icy Rock on Vulpix. And yeah, it is a dead slot for the most part, but you could argue that regular Ninetales is also a dead slot most times if you're using it on Sun, especially in higher tiers. Uh, Torkoal is less of it just because of rapid spins. In draft though, Ninetales I think is really good just because of Baton Pass for momentum, but you can't do that in OU, which is really sad, but... Or I mean, I don't think it's sad, it's just... I do think dry passing should be a thing. It's just that there were definitely ways to abuse it before. Like, I remember passing stats with Pukamuku with like Z and people letting me use Baton Pass back then when it was banned, it was really weird. Um, and obviously if you, if you use it on like a weak armor mon, like will it just fail or... I guess they can program it to do that, but... Anyway, so Titan looks... I didn't even realize that was the Titan's mouth, Jesus Christ. Yo, my God, you are a lot scarier than I thought you were. Uh, so Titan looks really cool with hail. Belly Drum can be definitely be threatening. I saw people use Terra Ice Ice Shard. I feel like when the tiers are obviously not as strong, like there's not as bulky Pokemon like Gambit and stuff like that, where you have to get that. Well, Ice Shard is just strong. Ice Shard is just good. It did like 60% to Arcanine at, pl uh, at plus six. That was crazy. Um, Florigus and Aromatis are the two fairies that I think are really strong. Bulky Water is my Lodicus. Nice. Uh, Meloetta did not feel overwhelming when I was playing it, but again, it's a more offensive meta game. I think as it, you know, settles down a little bit, becomes more balanced, you can see some sort of wish support from Screamtail into Meloetta type of thing, or just an assault vest set. I mean, you might even just see me spamming Relic Song because one of my favorite things to do is try to abuse the fact that there is no sleep anywhere, but I can still use Relic Song. Uh, Gudra, another nasty mon that I, I haven't played too, too much. Um, I do think the, the Tauros, like Tauros looks really good. Like Tauros Aqua. Tauros Aqua looks super freaking good. I think Tauros Blaze is obviously good too, but it was already down here. But Tauros Aqua looks very, very good as well while bulking up Tauros. Paldia Blaze is already PU, but it looks strong too in this metagame. This is Intimidate. Um, I think that this one though can get away with like Terra Steel to just deal with Star Raptor and it probably will find itself doing something like that. And then uh, the... Trailblaze set will bulk up Raging Bull, either body pressure, close combat. I like four attacks offense. Um, I, I really like four attacks in it. But uh, Grim Snarl could do some dual screens. I think bulk up my uh, parting shot set, which is like what it was doing in the end tier, is going to be a little bit better, especially because again, screens are gone. I'm not going to be using screens too much. I think down here, no point, right? Veil's gone. Can't really do too much. Uh, with it, obviously a bomb snows. I, I just did Vulpix, but a bomb snows right there. That was very disrespectful of me. Um, <laughs> a bomb snows see you. I apologize uh, that uh, that I said Vulpix, but I did fight Vulpix. Vulpix was fine. But yeah, a bomb snow obviously can do the hail too, um, as well. You might even see like some frost la uh, frost moth rising up type of thing next to Titan, just because it looks really good. A little sand slash obviously uh, there as well. That can be. That can be solid as your spinner and stuff like that. But, well, yeah, since I was being PU, yeah, definitely something that can work with those. So I could definitely see those three uh, doing it right there. Flamigo, kind of uh, a poor man star raptor in my opinion. It's wild that they're in the same tier. It's wild that they follow each other. I do think that if star raptor ends up going, 
that uh, that Flamigo is the other one um, that ends up taking its place. Probably ends up even being better, right? Because you just could close combat into the ghosts and don't care. I so I think that it's interesting to see that Oracorios are not broken anymore. Again, I'm trying to just give my general thoughts on these and kind of bouncing around the ones I think are really cool, but it's interesting to see that Oracorio is not broken like it was in the early metagames. Oracorio getting banned from like different tiers. It was like banned from three or four different tiers at the same time. I thought that was amazing and I'm proud of that mod to do it. Uh, just Terra gave it so much. Uh, just a plethora of fighters down here, right? You got two Hitmon uh, Chan and Hitmon Lee, and well, Hitmon Chan's already there. So you have Hitmon Chan, Hitmon Lee, and Hitmon Top. Heracross is the big one. I think even Palma is kind of a sleeper. Yeah, Mudsdale came down here and you had the Sinaconda and stuff, but offensive uh, is so good. And also the revival blessing aspect to bring back like a Flamigo or or um, the Staraptor looks really nice. Tatsugiri, uh, a great spinner in my opinion, especially because Gligar comes down. When Gligar and Tatsugiri, same thing. It's really, really strong spinner into it. Uh, Terra Ghost is probably going to be kind of common on like, uh, not Frostless leads, but like other spikers in this tier. I think Colossal can get away with Terra Ghost instead of Terra uh, Grass, in my opinion. And then Delphox is another giant sleeper uh, down here for sure. Uh, Specs looks good, but I'm looking more at Scarf faster than Staraptor. Uh, doesn't care about Trailblaze, Hair Clot across. So I'm looking at that. And then obviously your Scrafty can do some things too. Smeargold doing its lead. From P to ZU. Uh, kind of wild to see the bomb snow. Maybe we'll we'll try to play the uh, ZU tier again. Myself and Rabia with like some sort of Rampardos variant because I can definitely see that. Passimian, I think falling down to ZU is really, really, really sad. This is like an NURU staple with U-turn. Never mind this this image of him. <laughs> it's very funny. I like it. I like it a lot. Bastiodon actually, yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Uh, I think NU Live I did where Bastion was being used with Meganium. I don't know if they're goal was to use super 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 lower tiers but uh, iron defense sets sound nasty our believe up that mon is a beast in draft never forget uh, some of the mons that are also like, again just crazy it's cr it's crazy to see these fighters down your toxic croak plus Passimian, just in particular just wild to see um all the ice types as well they can drag dance up i think you could do some sort of manual rain too if you really want to uh bulk up poly wrath eh, okay it's okay it's okay. I was using sub bulk up. It was all right. I was trying it with Rabbit. It was all right uh, at the end of the day. Uh, the Quiver Dance Mons, though, I, I just find it so wild that Quiver Dance Mons fall down to tier. Because, like, if you look at ZU, right? So, look at ZU and let's look at this. Toxic Group looks phenomenal, right? Toxic Group looks absolutely phenomenal right here. Yeah, it's basically a Sweeney Sneasel, but with the water immunity that stops Basculin. So, Basculin, um, Wave Crash, Flip Turn, uh, Aqua Jet, right? And then you can run your uh, Psychic Fangs, I guess, if you really need to. Muck being number one. Bastion falling down is a nice little thing. I think Toad Scroll coming down here is really nice too. Nice little spinner. Shaman being number three is so disrespectful. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually really uh, excited to try the new ZU tier. It looks good. It looks really good. So what are your thoughts? A little bit uh, more faster pace or slower rather of... Um, of uh, Not faster pace. Yeah, yeah, I actually did break it down a lot quicker than usual. Usually I go an hour, but I'm also trying to keep in mind I got to get ready for the subathon and stuff like that too. Hopefully you still enjoyed the general discussion. Uh, if you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know down below. And also if you want to pick up my Draco bundle or even just the Draco Ice Shaker. This Ice Shaker stainless steel holds up to 26 ounces. Uh, use code AIM20. That will be 20% off as long as the subathon lasts. I have no idea how long the subathon lasts. Day one was great. Uh, we're, I started with seven hours and I ended with eight hours um, after a nine hour stream. So yeah, day one, we'll, we'll see how long it goes. I'll probably be live again around... Depend this will probably go up at 12 or by 12 ish. So I'll probably be live around, around three. I want it to be like one or two, but I need some sleep since we went to like 2 a.m. Uh, last night. But hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.